Hello, so we have been in this marina in Spain for more than seven months now during the winter. During that time there was a pandemic and we managed to get into the yard to get our boat all done up and we managed to get out again. Now we're trying to get out of this marina because things have started opening up in Spain. We've also been watching um, a series called Doomsday Preppers and it kind of dawned on us that actually as we're getting ready and prepping to leave this marina, we're doing very similar things and possibly preparing for the second wave of this pandemic. In this video, we're going to tell you about how we prep to be possibly at sea for quite a few weeks and how we um, plan to survive it. And maybe even at the end, Woody might even um, rate it and see how well we're doing. Across the world, ordinary people from all walks of life are taking whatever measures necessary to prepare and protect themselves from what they perceive is the fast approaching end of the world as we know it. Next, we go into the lives of a family of committed preppers who have gone to great lengths and made huge personal sacrifices to ensure their very survival. The experts will assess their preps to see if they have what it takes to survive. Yeah, the last year we, it was great because we had solar so that was always charging our batteries and that kept the fridge going and the freezer going. Is the solar panels put the energy into the batteries. The only problem is cooking. We can't cook uh, with the battery power it's because we um, don't have an inverter. We're trying to upgrade the whole system into being uh, more self-sufficient and more renewable rather than burning diesel with the generator. Make sure that we're fully topped up with diesel uh, because we need it obviously to get around and also if we need to run the generator we need diesel. So our boat takes 600 litres and we also have, we carry three jerry cans at the moment of 20 litres each uh, but we can get, could get more but we don't need it really here, there is places to get diesel but um, at least we've got a bit of an emergency as well. Fitting some sockets for the new inverter we've got coming uh, tomorrow. We're going to upgrade to a 3000 watt inverter. So I've just picked this up from the uh, local chandlery. It's a Victron Energy Phoenix inverter. This is part of our quest to become more self-sufficient when we're an anchor. We don't want to be too reliant on gas or too reliant on the generator. So what we can do is convert some of that battery power as produced by the solar. Because at the moment we've got an excess of energy during the day when the sun is high and we've got the batteries full. Will mean that we can run the halogen oven, the induction hob, the washing machine, um, and a, a toaster, microwave, things like that. All obviously not all at the same time, but it will give, give us that option when we're at anchor because we're hoping to spend a lot more time at anchor in the future, not just because it saves on marina fees, but also because of the danger of uh, further lockdowns due to the coronavirus. The money for this was gifted to us, so I'd just like to thank that person. Uh, you know who you are, thank you very much. This is something we've been after for a very long time. Um, and we've got four days before we leave this place to install it. I've got the skills and know-how to put it in properly, so I'm gonna get uh, Spencer from the local chandlery to come and do the initial installation. As you can see, we've got the inverter in place now. Uh, that's all tested and running really well. So this year, um, hopefully not only the fridge will um, be able to run off solar, but we'll also be able to cook at certain times of the day when the sun's high and the solar's working really well. It'll be good to have another source of energy to do our cooking with. If you've got coals as another form of fuel. When we're sailing, we also have a prop gen, a propeller generator. Um, which keeps the instruments going and the fridge going as well under sail at certain speeds. <coughs> we had the transformer replaced. This is a 24 to 32 volt transformer. It's got a 24 volt fan in there, which is, uh, as soon as we run off a 24 volt system, it'd be very handy. So I'm just butchering this before we throw it away or give it away. Well, most of the places we sail in are quite warm and uh, obviously all electronic uh, gadgets get hot. So, uh, That'll be handy putting in behind the consoles. Yeah. 24 volt fan. The good thing is when you're at sea is, is getting spare parts because you need, to, first of all you need to order them, then you need to have a delivery address to get them sent to, and then you've got to wait for them to arrive. So saving little things like that is actually really handy. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we can uh, butcher from this. Because we've already got the new inverter in place. Food is a real big job, so let me just ask Woody um, what he thinks the most important food item would be to take 
um, if you are prepping to uh, live off grid. Here we go. Food isn't all about just nutrition, it's about morale as well. So with that in mind, just ordered loads of curry mixes, tikka masala, cumin mix, coriander, everything you possibly need to make a curry. English tea, probably be the most important thing to put in a grab bag. Um, there's always a dilemma between Tetley's and Yorkshire. I'm a Tetley and a Yorkshire man myself, but you know, we've been through Tetley and obviously. Um, and possibly some, I think that the Americans won't understand as well as HP sauce. Every British person knows what HP sauce is and how important it is, particularly on things like fish and chips and sausage rolls and bangers and mash. So prepping in England is very different to uh, prepping in America. We don't have guns and four wheel drives and things like that. We have Yorkshire tea and HP sauce. We've been making weapons, um, a crossbow actually, and Dad's been starting to make it. We're, pa um, we're, panic by, uh, we're um, panicking, so we're prepping. <laughs> I'm making some crossbows for the boys, because we're going to, uh, to be anchoring out for about two weeks on a beach. So uh, we're prepping, and we've got no weapons on board, so we're making crossbows and battle axes. So one of the big jobs that I had to do today for prepping was the food shop. Rowan came to help, she was really good, and we went round and um, we pretty much filled two massive baskets of stuff. So we're doing the really big shop and we're provisioning up um, for as long as we can really with all our dry products. We can't um, put anything in the freezer because the freezer's just broken down this morning, so we're gonna go vegetarian and dry products for the next four weeks. I hear about this. Yeah, the freezer broke down yesterday, so that is not good because I was going to just fill it, but now it's just dry products. So, yeah, here we go this massive supermarket and stock up for as long as we can. Noodles, these are really good for passages. Stock cubes, tomatoes, good base for loads of things. Loads of these. We eat a lot more sort of vegan stuff, so meals, I can make a lot of meals with the, these sort of beans. I can make chickpea curries. Beans, we all love beans. Um, you could pretty much eat for lunch, dinner, you know, we're English, what do you expect? Pesto is always a good one. Whatever goes with that as well, you know what I mean. Going to the cast hill now. My mum um, is taking all the cardboard off the tins because cockroaches like the cardboard. And now she's writing what they are and stacking them up. Yeah, the other thing about um, getting rid of cardboard is this it's more packaging and you know the amount of we get a bucket this big sometimes just with waste in one day from all the packaging that goes into stuff spicy sardines that last till 2026 so that is survival food uh, no one likes spicy sardines that last forever these are min meat eaters these are herbs we'll all see whether we fix that freeze before we go um, we may end up just living off beans and rice. It's always a little bit overwhelming because now I've got to try and find somewhere to put it all. And um, that's the difficult thing about a boat is that you don't have a load of excess spare space. We are just a, a few days from leaving the dock and we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for some covers for the seats which haven't arrived. So basically I'm going to have to put the seating back together. One good thing about all this is Although I've butchered the uh, amal design, which uh, is not going to please the uh, purists amongst the amal owners, I've created a lot more storage space behind these seats. Um, it was inaccessible before, and now we've got these shelves, which I'm basically finishing off. A nice piece of epoxy varnished plywood, um, building a frame, um, and then put the rest of it together, and we should be done. Stowing away for a few months, like we are now, um, you've got to make use of every tiny little space in the boat. So Sometimes months later you find these things, um, pull them out of back of cabinets so you didn't, you've totally forgotten you stored. But um, it's great because these fit exactly in here, so it's almost like it was made for them. Yeah, and if things get really bad, then um, we've got this. Grow your own spinach. Although I don't have much luck actually with growing things on the boat. Most things die, but you know, you never know. So, um, the other thing that's happening um, 
while we prep to leave here is we've got our friends from Rigging Doctor, Maddie and Herbie, coming over. She's been doing an art class with um, the kids because she's an artist and um, I'm going to be attempting to cut Herbie's hair. This is um, Herbie and as you know I do cut the boy's hair sometimes but now I'm going to cut his hair. Um, I'm, I'm in he, very much need of a haircut. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, yeah he needs a haircut. So, um, yeah, I have done a few adult haircuts, so it's not going to be too bad. And um, if it is, then it's fine. It'll grow out, won't it? Yep. That's a <laughs> My first victim. <laughs> This is um, right, a genuine sangria. It's the beginnings of a sangria, a which is made by our genuine Spanish friends. Oh boy. And it was made a week ago, so this fruit has been soaking in possibly five, we think about five spirits, don't we? Of secret spirits that we don't know what they are. Because <laughs> we can never remember, because by the time we've drank the sangria, we forgot what they said. So anyway, we're going to try it. And so you've got to mix it with peach juice and wine and um yeah, that's this is like it. that's what makes it unique yes very cool i'm super excited interesting look <laughs> yeah. how the strawberries it's are the white um i'm maddie and i'm herbie and we are rigging doctor on youtube and we uh we sail a 45 foot morgan from 1968 <laughs> so it's an old girl and we love her very much and a couple things that set us apart are our electric motor and our synthetic rigging full synthetic rigging uh, so we have started in Baltimore, Maryland in the U.S. and about uh, 2017 we began our, our journey and we have since then spent three years crossing the Atlantic Ocean, spending a lot of time in the Azores. And, and we finally met uh, Mothership and everyone yep. here in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a long journey to get here and uh, it's been very rewarding and wonderful. And traveling is all about the cultures that we get to experience and the wonderful people we get to meet because the boating community, the sailing community specifically, is an extraordinary community to be a part of. And so yeah. we get to meet really, really cool, unique people. And you might get a haircut from one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the highlights for me have been the destinations. Um, I have I really enjoyed experiencing just completely different cultures from the U.S. like like Morocco and Tangier and uh, Gibraltar and just um, really the thing about sailing is that you have the luxury of really discovering a place uh, fully. <laughs> yeah, we feel that we live in these places. Yeah. After we've been there for a while, bringing your home along with you really helps. Yeah. Uh, a huge plus for me is the complete and total isolation of being out in the ocean where you're just like the only thing in sight. Uh, we decided that since you can't really sail the med in the winter, we went to the boat here but to not stop traveling we rented a camper van to tour through Europe and we uh, we made it to Austria when the borders shut down. We found ourselves trapped in a camper van in Austria. Our plan is to then sail back to the Americas uh, this winter. Yes. Everything yeah. is depending on the wind always. <laughs> yeah, so with the electric motor we can't motor anywhere with mm -hmm. any distance. 100% so sail. Yeah, it's all the wind. <laughs> so a great place to find us is youtube.com slash rigging doctor. Yeah. Where you can subscribe to our channel and follow along with our adventures. You uh, can also find us at our website, uh, riggingdoctor.com, where we have a blog, a lot of how-to stuff. Uh, and a lot of rigging techniques. A lot of rigging stuff, <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook, both under rigging doctor. So this here is the water maker. There's a pre-filter here and the pump and the filters up here. Now it's not something that we got working last year or the year before because in the Mediterranean it's, it's always easy to pick up water. Um, we ran it a few times just to test it but other than that um, we've never used it really. Um, but this season we're really determined to uh, make more use of it because we're still not sure about the lockdown and the second phase of the coronavirus. Um, and we've heard of people who have been stuck at anchor for several months. There's bound to be things that go wrong because there always is um, when we bring new systems back online or when we bring old systems back online. The generator, which looks like something out of uh, mortal engines really, um, it's an old uh, Onan 6.5 kilowatt diesel generator. 
it's very old and very leaky um, we've had many problems with this but I think it's kind of calmed itself down a little bit hopefully we'll be less reliant on the generator because we're trying to switch slowly over to renewables um, using the solar um, so now we've got the solar we've got the new battery bank the AGMs and we have got the the inverter so we can start to use more of that uh, Sun energy uh, still haven't got a wind generator yet but that's that's way down the line at the moment so we still are reliant on our generator from time to time so we've got to keep it going so we noticed last season that the uh, the dinghy was rubbing against the davids and leaving little burn marks in the fabric well in the rub rail anyway which wasn't healthy so i'm cutting lengths of tubing with the internal diameter of 36 mil to put around the david poles um, so when the dinghy rubs against it it rolls rather than rubs to leave the dock today but um, we didn't get ready until 2.30 and then the wind picked up and we thought you know what it's just we're gonna wait till Friday when it dies off a bit but now Woody's gone out shopping and he's like panic buying and I'm gonna show you what he's bought. I was walking past Mercadona and I suddenly thought you know I could just get a last pack of beer because there's nothing worse than trying to cart these things from the shops and on the dinghy and back on so I thought I'd get another pack of beer. When I was there and I suddenly realised that what we haven't got is any whipping cream so I thought actually we need some whipping cream and then I thought, well, if you've got whipping cream, we haven't got a whisk, so I went to the Chinese shop and then I bought okay. electric whisk. And I thought, if you are sitting on the beach, we've got nothing to sit on, so I've got this stool. So, so while you lot are all panic buying toilet roll, we're panic buying whipping cream. Oh, chocolate puddings as well. So we <gasps> chocolate puddings! Guys, for the chocolate puddings! That was a last minute panic buying. Stool, check that out. Check that out. Oh yeah. I'll take you some good. So today's Thursday and it's really windy so we can't go. So while we're staying here we're going to learn how to make yogurt with wisdom. because it's really annoying when you're in the middle of the ocean and the only thing you want is yogurt with honey. <laughs> so, uh, it's just three of the large mason jars mm -hmm. and we just rotate the three. So we make new yogurt and it'll fill up two and then when one starts getting low and we're on our last one, we use the last one to be the seed culture for the next two mm -hmm. and we just keep cycling through. So all yeah. we're gonna do is just heat up some milk Like camping, you know, when you yeah, the, the, yeah. the propane. <laughs> no, I'm gonna switch it. If you don't stir it, the bottom scalds, and then it gets kind of weird. Yeah, it smells like burnt milk. So now it's starting to steam a lot, so mm -hmm. it's done. So now we're just gonna pour it into the jars. Maybe the sun's surrounded by mirrors. Solar oven, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're obsessed with solar ovens. They've got a solar oven. We are obsessed really? with solar ovens too. Wow. It's Tom really cool. Can you like cook eggs and bacon and beans in it? We've you can cook done... anything. We haven't yeah. done eggs before, but we've done chicken and vegetables. Yeah. Wow. So these sit, and if you touch the outside, it's going to scald you? Yeah. It's hot. Um, and it's just wait for it to cool. Right. So it's got to be about as warm as a bath and um, should be just enough for it to be warm but not enough for it to burn. Yeah, so the, the old yogurt, like a, a previous yogurt culture, you then pour it into the milk that's nothing's in there and you're just adding the bacteria so that way it'll make more yogurt again. So once the yogurt's in there, in the milk, you just kind of mix it all around. It just pretty much spreads the bacteria everywhere. That's all you're really doing. So 
so it just goes everywhere. Oh. I'll just close it all the way. <laughs> clean that. Now the last step is we're gonna put these in the oven with a little tiny tea light. And that tea light's just gonna give it enough heat to keep the bacteria going, keep them active. And they're just gonna spread and pretty much repopulate this whole thing of milk. So, uh, so before I put it in, I always loosen the lids, that way, just for heat expansion and everything. And the yogurt will actually like suck it down, so. So I just put them in the oven pretty close to each other. One little tea light right in the middle. That tea light burns for eight to 10 hours. So we pretty much let the tea light burn the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then after it's done, we check it. Can't really mess it up. And then when you take it out of there, just tighten the lids all the way and then just put them in the fridge. And then it's, it's all finished. Perfect. This is a compost toilet and I'm really amazed at how it doesn't smell at all. It's really cool. I actually think it'd be great thing to have. And this is Maddie's compost toilet. It's, uh, it's called Nature's Head. So, yeah, there's like two main kinds of composting toilet companies and uh, this one's Nature's Head and we've had a really great, uh, we've, we've just really enjoyed it. It's been fantastic for seven years. So I've now got like toilet envy, um, <laughs> if that's possible. <laughs> Because, yeah, because, would ever understand yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Only a, only a sailor would understand that um, <laughs> you can actually have toilet envy. It's brilliant. Tomorrow, we are finally leaving this dock. The wind's good and it's going east and that's just what we want. So we are well packed up. And tonight, so we're just doing our final list. Um, this is the final list. This is supposed to be the kind of last minute things, but it's turned into another massive list. I've had to create a new list for the tidying and stowing away. I've done the, I've done the engine checks, um, and it's always a bit nerve wracking after seven months of boatyard work and being in the marina and, and being in lockdown. Um, the boat hasn't really been pushed at all. I've done quite a bit of work on the engine. Uh, the generator I haven't really done any work to but we've replaced the old inverter. We put off leaving uh, a few days because the wind was quite high and I didn't want to suddenly have engine failure as we were leaving a marina with two meters of swell and the wind in the wrong direction. So it's flat calm today and so we're going to head off in about half an hour I think. So um, we're ready to go. I'm just off to get the last minute essentials which is um, bread, um, because then we've got to make our own, I guess, when we run out of bread. And, um, and then we're gonna wave goodbye and head off. Oh, I just love this bread, it smells so good. Mm. Mothership, the expert practical preppers have reviewed your preps. You live at sea, which is a safe location, and have a good amount of supplies. You've taken the right steps by opening up to fellow cruisers. However, you need to do more to secure your boat. Consider a security system, cameras, and defense training. To determine how long you can initially survive a catastrophe, practical preppers have scored your preps in five categories of 20 points each for a total possible score of 100. Food. 16 out of 20 points. Water, 17 out of 20 points. Shelter, 19 out of 20 points. Security, 5 out of 20 points. Your ability to team up with fellow cruisers such as Rigging Doctor to make your own yogurt, 16 X-Factor points. Your total survival score is 73 out of a possible 100. You have 10 minutes initial survival time. You and me.
So thanks for watching and thanks in particular to our patrons who make these videos possible. Uh, without your support, they wouldn't happen. No matter how rough things may come to be, you and me, we're family. We would really love to hear from you, so you could go over to the Patreon page or even the Facebook page and leave comments there. Right.